Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get the to the Bible word. Bible says, have seven priests with trumpets march in front of the ark. The ark in the Old Testament represents the presence of God. In other words, the praise team, the trumpeters, precede his presence. Let me say it this way. His presence follows the praise. His presence comes after the worship. Read in John chapter 4, Jesus made it very clear. He said, the Father seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth. If you want God to come seeking you, worship him in spirit and in truth. Psalm 22, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Let me dispel that misnomer that has gone around the church for too long. When folks say when praises go up, blessings come down. No. When praises go up, the blessing doesn't come down. The blesser comes down. Are you with me? When praises go up, healing doesn't come down. The healer comes down. When praises go up, the deliverance doesn't come down. The deliverer. Are you with me, somebody? When praises go up, a salvation doesn't come down, but the Savior comes down. When praises go up, redemption doesn't come down, but the Redeemer comes down. So when we praise God, we want to look for the giver, not the gift. Are you with me, somebody? So praise precedes the presence of God. We see this in 2 Samuel chapter 6. You're familiar with the story about David. The Bible says that he danced before the ark. Meaning, if you want God to follow you around, if you want his presence, stay in a posture of praise. Dancing is just one posture of praise. So the Bible says that David got down into his skivvies. Come on, do you know what I'm talking about here? He said he had a fine linen loincloth. I don't know what kind of loin, but I know it was fine. And the Bible says that he went out there and he danced down Jerusalem Avenue. The presence of God followed him down Jerusalem Avenue. He turned up Main Street. Guess what? The presence of God followed him up Main Street. He dropped in McKeesport to come up Market Street. Oh, come on, somebody. In the presence of God. Listen, listen, listen. Honey, dance your way into Walmart. The presence of God is coming with you. When you go to your mechanic, Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is coming with you. No matter where you go, remain in your posture of worship. Proskunetis in the Greek, meaning you don't worship God when you come to Sunday morning, honey. It's a lifestyle. You go to bed at night, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. you wake up in the morning, oh, I bless your name, oh, my soul, and all that is with me. And It's a lifestyle. It's something that becomes a part of you. Come on, we sing the song. It's not what I do. It's who I am. Now, if you know the story about David, the ark followed him everywhere. And his wife, her name was Michael. When he got home, she said, what are you doing, boy? Didn't you see them girls out there? All all the maid servants looking at you and... How can you, the king of Israel, how can you become so undignified? I love what David's reply is. He said, honey, 
you ain't seen nothing yet. I will become even more undignified for my God. Come on, do I got a witness in this house, somebody? The Bible goes on to say when you read the story that Michael was barren all the days of her life. So there's a warning in there, somebody. Be careful when somebody's worshiping God or praising God more than you. And you say, hmm, does she really need to do all that? <laughs> Baby, you don't know the depths of my worship. Come on, somebody. You don't know the path or the track or what God delivered them from. The alabaster box. She broke it. They says, what are you doing that could have fed the poor? It could have did this, that, and the other. We didn't know the cost of her alabaster box. Michael was barren all the days of her life. I believe there's fellowships today. I believe there's Christians walking in spiritual barrenness because of their attitude of praise and worship. Who are any of us to determine how much praise, how much worship, how much dancing how much of the lifting of a hands how much with the shout these are all biblical methods of worshiping god who are we to determine how much is enough so praise precedes the presence of god we see in second chronicles chapter 20 most of you know the story if you studied the bible at all it's the story about King Jehoshaphat. They were surrounded by the Mayunites and the Hittites and some parasites and maybe some cellulite there. They were surrounded and they didn't know what to do and they summoned the king and they said, we don't want to know what to do. We were surrounded by a vast army, greatly outnumbered. So he goes to the prophet and they pray and they seek the Lord and the prophet comes back with the answer and he says, okay, Jehoshaphat, here's the game plan. Tomorrow morning, you need to get your infantry men out. Then you need to put your spies out in front of... Did he say that? No, no, no. He said, read it. Second Chronicles chapter 20. He says, no, no, no. You get your choir to go out ahead. Listen, I'm talking about praise preceding the presence of God. He says, you put the choir out, you put the band out there, you put the praise team out front, and you begin to sing a song. We need to go into battle with a praise on our lips. The Bible says they began to sing a song for the Lord is good and his love endures for, for a simple song. Come on. For the Lord is good and his love endures. And I believe as they began to sing it, it might have been a whisper. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. But I believe as they continued to worship and pray, I believe the presence of God united them together and they went out. And the Bible says as they sang with one voice. Are you hearing me? We're talking about unity here this morning. Not two voices. They sang with one voice. They were singing one song. They were all on the same sheet of music. Are you following me, somebody? The Bible says as they began to worship the Lord, the Lord set an ambushment against the enemy. They turned their swords on each other and destroyed one another. Come on, somebody in the house. When they arrived, all they had to do was pick up the spoil. That's what I said. It took them three days to carry the spoil back to the camp. Three days it took them. Listen, who were the first ones into the gifts? It was the worshipers. Do you need peace, somebody? Do you need joy, somebody? You need to press on in through praise and worship. Let me give you one more example. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. It's the dedication of the temple of Solomon. 
The Bible says they came down there and all the priests, they had committed themselves to prayer and fasting and, and they came out of the temple. And the Bible says, and they all came together regardless of their division. We're talking about unity. They came out and they sang the same song that Jehoshaphat sang. They said, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. For his, the Lord is good and his love endures forever. It says, as they began to worship, the, glo the glory of the Lord filled the temple where the priest could not even stand to minister. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking for the omnipresence of God. I know he's everywhere all the time. I'm looking for the manifestation of the presence of God. Come on, somebody. Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yerusha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. Now, you can help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth by simply hitting that like button subscribing to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell and last but not least share this message with all your friends and family well god bless you and maranatha jesus christ is coming soon